Hey guys, my name is Jordan, and today we're going to find out why a GE washer isn't draining. There are a few different parts we can check to fix this problem. The drain pump and control board are the most common ones that may need to be replaced. Let's walk through each step together so you can diagnose and repair your washer. Before we get started, take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can see more guided repairs. We appreciate your support. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we need a multimeter, a quarter inch nut driver, 3 eighths inch nut driver, pliers, and a putty knife. While you're getting those together, please remember to keep safety first. Always unplug your washer or switch off the circuit breaker before you do any testing or repairs. You'll also want to turn off your water supply. The first thing we're going to check is the drain pump. To access it, you'll need to remove the front panel of the washer. Use a putty knife to find the two clips under the top panel at the front. Then push in with the putty knife until it releases the panel. Next, take the front panel and at a slight angle, pull it off the lower tabs to remove it from the cabinet. The drain pump will be at the bottom right. To see if the drain pump is good, we need to check for the right voltage. Since we'll be checking live voltage during this test, you'll need to plug your washer back in and turn it on. Be very careful here to protect yourself from electric shock, which could potentially cause serious injuries. Don't ever test live voltage if you're uncomfortable using a multimeter. First, we're going to set the multimeter to test for AC voltage. This will have a symbol that looks like a V with a squiggly line. There are two wires going to the pump. While the washer is in drain mode, put one probe on each wire terminal. You should get a reading of 120 volts. If you get the right amount of voltage but the pump isn't draining, you'll need to replace the pump. If there's no voltage, you'll need to test the board and wiring. To get to the board, we need to use a nut driver to remove the four quarter inch screws on the top of the back of the panel. Then roll the top panel forward to disengage it from the tabs and set it on the top panel. We're going to be doing another voltage test here, so keep your washer plugged in and please be very careful. Keep the multimeter on the AC voltage setting. On the board, you need to find the correct terminals and wires to test. Find pins J11 and J10. We need to test from terminal 4 on J11, which is a white wire with a red stripe, to terminal 1 on J10, which is a red wire with a black stripe. You should get a reading of 120 volts AC here. If there's no power, that means you have a wiring issue or incoming power issue and need to check the receptacle. If there is power at this point, we need to see if the board is sending power to the pump. While in drain mode, test from terminal 5 on J11, which is a black wire, to terminal 1 on J10, which is a red wire with a black stripe. You should get a reading of 120 volts AC. If there's no power out, then you have a bad board. If you have power here, it's either a wiring issue or a bad pump. In this case, our pump is getting good voltage but isn't draining, so we'll need to replace the pump. Always unplug your washer or switch off the circuit breaker before you do any testing or repairs. You can remove the old drain pump by first removing the two hoses running to it. You can press in on the clamps and slide the hoses off. It's a good idea to have a towel handy in case there is any water left in the hoses. Then you can disconnect the wire harness. Once those are removed, use a 3 8 inch nut driver to take out the two screws that hold the pump to the base. To reinstall, put the new drain pump back on with the two screws. Next, reattach the wire harness. Then slide the hoses back on and use pliers to put the clamps back over the hose end to secure it to the pump. After that's done, you can put the front panel back on the lower tabs and then line up the sides so all the tabs on the sides fit into the panel. Once those are lined up, push in on the top of the front panel to keep it back under the clips on the top panel. Lastly, turn the water supply back on and plug the washer back in. Once you've found the faulty part, grab your model number and head over to AppliancePartsPros.com to order a replacement. Most orders arrive in just a few business days, and we have thousands of videos to show you how to install your new part. You can also share your repair experience with us by leaving a comment below. And if this video helped you, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more videos like this one. Thanks for your support.